little skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here and welcome back to another Fun Facts video. So this one is for the movie Fun and Fancy Free. Enjoy! While the film is often credited as the last time Walt Disney voiced Mickey Mouse, this is inaccurate. It was indeed the last film to feature Disney's voice as he recorded much of Mickey's dialogue to the spring and summer of 1941. But later, Disney recorded some lines as Mickey Mouse for the television show The Mickey Mouse Club, 1955. Edgar Bergen was one of the most popular ventriloquists of the 1940s, even having his own radio show featuring Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd. After seeing this film, he said he was dismayed to see how much he moved his lips, blaming it on the fact that on the radio, he did not have to move his lips and had become spoiled. Billy Gilbert voiced Willie the Giant. He was a well-known radio comic whose best-known gag was a comic sneeze. He also voiced Sneezy in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 1937. Both segments were being produced independently as full-length features, but when wartime shortages lost the studio resources, time, and animators who were drafted, Walt Disney made the decision to combine the two. The song Fun and Fancy Free, I'm a Happy Go Lucky Fellow, as sung by Jiminy Cricket, was intended to be used in Pinocchio 1940, but was dropped. This is one of the first Walt Disney films to list the voice credits for the animated characters and the first to actually list Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy as if they were actors in the live-action film. In Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947, it is never explained where Mickey gets the beans from. One draft featured Honest John Fowlfellow, the villainous fox from Pinocchio 1940, as a swindler who, set, who sold Mickey the magic beans. Another version had Mickey giving the cow to the Queen of Happy Valley, played by Minnie Mouse, in exchange for them. The Bongo 1947 story was inspired by a story written by Sinclair Lewis, which appeared in a 1930 issue of Cosmopolitan. This is the fourth of seven packaged films released by Walt Disney's company in the 1940s due to the wartime budgetary constraints. They were called packaged films because they were featured length films containing two or more short films tied together by surrounding material. In the canon, Fun and Fancy Free 1947 was presented was preceded by The Reluctant Dragon, 1941, Saludos Amigos, 1942, The Three Caballeros, 1944, and Make My Music, 1946, and followed by Melody Time, 1948, and The Adventures of Ichabod Crane and Mr. Toad, 1949. Unlike many of the Walt Disney films, Fun and Fancy Free, 1947 has not been re-released over and over. However, both of the animated segments have been shown separately on television. In releases of Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947, for the television market, the parts featuring Edgar Bergen were often cut and replaced other material. The most notable variants were one where Ludwig von Drake introduced the film and acted as narrator, and one where Sterling Holloway served in the same role. Willie the Giant had a second major appearance in Mickey's Christmas Carol 1983, where he plays the ghost of Christmas present. One of the reasons behind the creation of the Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 was an effort to boost the popularity of Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse was Disney's most popular character from 1928 to the mid-1930s. By the late 1930s, both the studio staff and the audience were losing interest in him. He was increasingly overshadowed by Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. To address the problem, Walt Disney ordered the production of some Mickey-eccentric film projects such as Brave Little Taylor 1938 and The Sorcerer's Apprentice 1940. Fun and Fancy Free was released on VHS in the summer of 1997 to commemorate its 50th anniversary. None of the ads for its release featured any clips from the Bongo segment and only showed clips from the Mickey and the Beanstalk segment. The box art doesn't feature Bongo either. The most likely reason for this is because Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, as well as Jiminy Cricket, who also appears in the box art, are far more recognizable characters than Bongo, so this would help increase sales of the video. Later, home media releases of the more of the movie also included excluded Bongo from the cover art. One reason that the film was in development hell from late 1941 to 1947 was the Disney Studios' relationship with the United States government and military. When the United States entered the World War II, various government departments and military branches commissioned the studio to create training and propaganda films at sold, aimed at soldiers and the wider civilian audience. Several film projects had to be put on hold as the studio focused on its war-related products. By 1942, 90% of its 550 employees were working on war-related films. In some versions of Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947, that hen who laid the golden eggs from the original story was also present. Mickey attempts to convince Willie to turn into a fly so that he can, he can be swatted. In Brave Little Taylor 1938, Mickey killed seven flies with one blow and is sent on a quest to kill a giant as everyone thought he was talking about killing seven giants. 
The working title for Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 was The Legend of Happy Valley. Various drafts for Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 had scenes explaining how Mickey got the magic beans. Because these scenes were scrapped to shorten the duration of the film sequence, the film never explains where they came from. Since Bongo is a circus character, initial drafts for his segment of the film included a minor crossover with fellow circus character Dumbo and his supporting cast. The idea was scrapped when it was decided to shorten the duration of the film and minimize the size of the cast. The designs for the Bongo segment of the film and its characters changed much during the, its production. The initial plan was a more realistic depiction of the bears. In the end, the designs were simplified and became more cartoony. Edgar Bergen and Dinah Shore were cast in the film to increase its audience appeal. Bergen had become famous for regularly being featured in the popular radio show The Chase and Sanborn Hour from 1937 to its end in 1948. Shore owed part of her fame to radio since she was a featured singer in several radio shows. By the time the film was released, Shore was expanding her activities to performing for the record market and already had some significant hits. The animation was finished in 1942, but the release date was delayed because of World War II. The Golden Harp slightly resembles Cinderella, at least sharing a hairstyle with Cinderella's hairdo for the ball. Cinderella in 1950 was in pre-production at the time this film was being made. During production of Bongo 1947, three characters were dropped. These included a monkey named Ch Chimpy, who was Bongo's partner, and two mischievous bear cubs that the former characters had to look after. While the film employs the talents of ventriloquist Edgar Berg Bergen and his dummies, it was a somewhat atypical performance for him. One reason for Berger's success as a performer was that he incorporated double entendres and risque humor in his dialogue, elements that were considered daring and innovative for the time. This material could not be used in a Disney film. The giant of the film does not die. In the finale of the film, Willie the Giant stomps through Hollywood looking for Mickey Mouse. By the time this film was released, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and, du and Goofy starred in individual series of animated shorts and no longer appeared together. Their series had varying levels of popularity, numbers of films produced, and longevity. Several of Mickey-related films actually focused on Pluto, with Mickey in a secondary role or a cameo. The last, performance, the last appearance of Mickey in his classic animated short was The Simple Things 1953, which was also the final appearance of Pluto. Donald continued to stir in his own series until the 1960s, his last regular animated short being The Litterbug 1961. He also appeared in the two different educational films in 1965, but these never received wide release. Goofy had the most enduring series out of the three of them and since it ended in 1965 with Goofy's Freeway Trouble 1965. When it was decided to include Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 in a package film, the problem remained which one. An initial plan was to pair it with The Wind in the Willows 1949, but the Mickey project was ready for release before the other ones were. The Wind in the Willows 1949 was eventually part of The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad 1949. Despite the fact that the Lo Lulu Bell is the female lead in the Bongo story, she has never been properly introduced in the Disney comic books. The original Bongo short story, Little Bear Bongo, 1930, by Sinclair Lewis, was still under copyright when the film was produced. Walt Disney secured the rights to the story in 1940. Lumpjaw, Bongo's Enemy, was adapted to the Disney comics in the 1940s. Besides Bongo-related stories, Lumpjaw has appeared as a villain in stories starring Chip and Dale. He was a regular in the series until 1986. Mickey and the Beanstalk, 1947, is notable for rewriting the trio of Mickey and Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy. While they had co-starred in several animated shorts of the 1930s, the last of them was The, Wal the Whalers, 1938. Contrary to popular belief, this is not the first film project to star James McDonald as the voice of Mickey Mouse. He was the voice actor for Mickey Mouse from 1948 until his retirement in 1977 when Wayne Alwine took over as the official Mickey Mouse voice. Mickey and the Beanstalk, 1947 is an adaptation of the English fairy tale Jack and the Beanstalk. The earliest version of the story print was in 1807 by Benjamin Tabart, 1767 to 1833. However, his version was overshadowed by two later and more popular versions on 1842 by one by Henry Cole, 1808 to 1882, and in 1891 by Joseph Jacobs, 1854 to 1916. Most of the 20th century adaptations were based on Jacobs' version. The concept of Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 was conceived by animators William Cottrell and T. He in 1940. 
they had some trouble convincing Walt Disney to approve of their idea. He reportedly found their concepts for the film project hilariously funny, but unsuitable to the characters. The phrase fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of an Englishman from the Jack and the Beanstalk story seems to be much older than the known versions of the story. Variations of it appears in earlier works such as Have With You to Saffron Walden, 1596 by Thomas Nash, 1567 circa 1601, King Lear, 1605 by William Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616, and Jack the Giant Killer, 1711. Story development for Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 started in May 1940, but the film project was delayed for several years. The production of Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 initially started in May 1941, but was put on hold by late October of the same year. The initial plan for Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 was for it to be the second low-budget animated feature film of the studio, following Dumbo 1941. It was to involve most of the same staff members and cast of the previous film. The long period of the film in development hell required Disney to change plans. Earlier drafts for Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 featured both a wife and a baby for Willie the Giant, the latter of whom Mickey, Donald, and Goofy would have attempted to take care of. The Disney version of Bongo 1947 was adapted to the Disney comics in 1947. While never a major star, he has starred in a few stories of, of the 1950s and 60s and has appeared in crossovers. For example, he made a 1950 guest appearance in the long-running Little Bad Wolf series, which stars the son of the Big Bad Wolf. His last major story appeared in 1979. One of the headlines in the newspaper, Jiminy Cricket Dances Across, reads, Oceans will gobble Earth, scientists forecast in this film from 1947. Whether the protagonist of the Jack and the Beanstalk is supposed to be seen as a hero or a villain is disputed. The story depicts Jack gaining the sympathy of a man's wife, hiding in his house, robbing and financially killing him. While some versions of the story depict this as the justified killing of a villain's giant, others are made more ambiguous. The original Jack and the Beanstalk story is the only one in a circle of Jack stories. Another notable one is Jack and the Giant Killer. While not necessarily supposed to be about the same character, they all have very similar elements. All feature youthful protagon protagonists with trickster elements called Jack. Charlie McCarthy, featured in the film, was Edgar Bergen's most popular character. He was a top hat and monocle wearing womanizer with known with known for his snappy dialogue. Willie the Giant was adapted into the Disney comics in the 1940s. Never a major star, he has had several appearances over the years. He has been featured in series starring Chip and Dale, Dumbo, Santa Claus, and the Seven Dwarfs. He also appears in crowd scenes and crossover stories with massive casts. First Disney film to be dubbed into the into Norwegian. It is the ninth Disney animated feature film and the fourth of the package films. The studio produced in the 1940s helped finance Cinderella 1950 and the subsequent others such as Alice in Wonderland 1951 and Peter Pan 1953. Finished censorship via register number 107057 delivered on 28-8-2003. The second Disney animated feature film to release in May after Bambi 1942. Spoilers. The Mickey and the Beanstalk 1947 project began in 1940 and originally Sterling Holloway was planned to be the narrator. When Mickey and the Beanstalk aired in 1955 on the Disneyland television show, all scenes with Edgar Bergen were dropped and Sterling Holloway narrated instead. In addition, the final encounter with Willie, and the, with Willie the Giant was altered so that instead of him lifting up Bergen's house roof to ask where Mickey is, the giant lifts up the roof of the Disney studio to ask Walt Disney this same question. Alright guys, and that is it for these fun facts for Fun and Fancy Free. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe, and I love you guys.